Hello, my name is Leo Gommand and I'm going to tell you something about biomass as one of the sources for sustainable energy production. Biomass has its origin in grown material. We get the energy from biomass by combusting it. Carbon dioxide is emitted into the air and again taken from the air by living plants and trees. It's a short carbon cycle and therefore called carbon dioxide neutral. There's biomass in different forms, for example, residual from sewage treatment plants, manure from livestock farming, organic waste from agriculture and food industry, vegetables and garden waste from consumers, but also experimental algae and seaweed, and wood from trees, pruning and other woody waste. Grown energy crops like rapeseed corn and palm, palm oil are also biomass. All these forms have their advantages and disadvantages and can be converted in various kinds of fuels. We can convert energy crops into liquid motor fuels, but maybe it's better to use them for food as long as people die from hunger. Furthermore, does cultivation require a large land use and often valuable nature areas are destroyed. More liquid biomass, such as manure and residues, can be converted into biogas and processed into pure methane gas. Wood and woody waste is incinerated and can bring harmful emission and particulate matter into the outside air, especially when there is an incomplete combustion. And of course, it is important to plant new trees when they are harvested, so they can absorb the carbon dioxide that is emitted during combustion. Until now we discuss sustainable energy sources like solar, but at this moment wood and woody waste is the largest renewable energy source in the world, as you can see in this graph here. It's the blue part. Private households cooking and heating with wood fuels represents one third of the global renewable energy consumption. In the European Union, 45% of the renewable energy origins from wood fuels which is 6% of the total energy consumption. So, biomass seems to be a serious renewable energy source and has its advantages against wind and solar energy, because it is energy and energy storage at the same time. You combust, combust it when you need it. Wind and solar are fluctuating sources that are not always available when there is a demand, and therefore they need storage which makes it more complex and expensive. Ok, welcome in my home in the Dutch city of Maastricht. We have quite a lot of sunshine here during spring, summer and autumn. I collect this solar heat with 10 square meters of solar collectors and the roof on the roof and store it for a few days in a 900 litre vessel to use it for space heating and domestic hot water. But now it is winter and we do not have much solar heat. In summer, we only need domestic hot water and there's more than enough sunshine to provide all the heat that is needed. During spring and autumn, we also need heat for space heating and most of it can be provided by the solar collectors from the storage vessel. The vessel provides domestic hot water and is connected to the radiators and floor heating system in the house. In winter, there's almost no solar heat for heating. We have a heat storage for a few days but not for a whole season. So now biomass comes in. This piece of dry wood of approximately 2.5 kg contains the heat of 1 litre of oil or 1 cubic metre of natural gas, a quite compact form of stored energy. It's cold now, so I will put it on the hood in the wood stove. The heat from combustion is emitted into the room through the glass and uh, heats our living room completely. But we have a special wood stove which has a, uh, a heat exchanger inside. This heat exchanger is connected to the heat storage vessel and pumps part of the heat that is produced. There is enough heat from the solar collector or wood stove stored in the vessel over here 
to provide domestic hot water and to heat other rooms with radiators, besides the living room. Then there is still enough uh, heat to store in the vessel to heat the living room in the morning with a floor heating system. So I do not have to wake up early in the morning to fill the wood stove. And even if I'm lazy uh, to fill the wood stove, there's a gas heater that heats the vessel. But of course, natural gas is not carbon dioxide neutral. Now you have seen what you can do at home on a small scale. But it is also possible on a large scale. Like they do it, for example, in the Danish energy neutral island of Samsø. Here they have large fields of solar collectors standing in the middle, meadow. The solar heat is stored in a large vessel and when there isn't enough sunshine, it is heated with biomass in the boiler house behind the large vessel. This large uh, solar biomass plant is connected to a heat grid that provides a small village with heat for room heating and domestic hot water. There are a few of these local district heating plants on the island of Samsø. The biomass origins from wood or straw from the island itself. In fact, straw is also a kind of energy storage and takes some space as you can see here. After harvesting the corn in August, the straw is dried and stored so that it can be used for heating during the winter season. Each straw block weighs about 600 kilos, which is 1300 pounds, which is the equivalent to 200 liters or 50, 53 gallons of oil. The ash of the incinerated straw is scattered over the fields as a fertilizer. So it's a complete circle. <coughs> In fact, biomass is stored uh, solar energy, but the efficiency of converting solar radiation into biomass is poor. In this photosynthesis process, less than 1% of the solar radiation is converted into biofuel. For solar collectors, for example, the efficiency is about 40%, and for photovoltaic panels, about 20%, but that's electricity. So, the land use for biofuels is high, and for that reason, it is better to use biomass from waste flows and maintenance of nature protection areas. In the Dutch city of Sittard, there is a biomass energy plant that runs on wood and prunings for maintenance and management of green spaces in the city. This biomass energy plant produces electricity and heat at the same time. The electricity is supplied to the grid and the heat is distributed through a district heating network. In the summer, when less heat is needed, cold for cooling is generated with the heat from biomass plant by absorption uh, cooling. Biomass also can be extracted from biomass through a fermentation process. In the Meerlanden, in the Netherlands, uh, this methane gas is extracted in a digester from organic waste from households and distributed through the national Dutch gas grid. A lot of sewage treatment plants put their organic sludge in a biodigester to produce methane gas for the gas for the gas grid or produce electricity and heat with this gas in a combined heat and power plant. The same is done with manure from livestock farms. Okay. As you could experience during this short presentation, we can conclude that energy from biomass is much more than bullshit. <laughs>